What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Inside Major League Pickleball. So happy to be back on the pod with my friend Tyson Apostle. I was going to call you Pickleball's fashionista, but I don't know. This week's guest, Tyson, I think has you beat. So I yeah. can't do that this week. Sure, that's fine. I <laughs> concede. It's good to be back with you. How it's you really been? good to be back. Yeah, I've been <laughs> excited to get, to get back, and uh, we're back in it, and back we have... It. A big event coming up. Mm -hmm. First event of season two of 2023 in Atlanta. You're on your way there tomorrow. Is tomorrow that right? Tomorrow morning. Yep. And uh, you'll be doing all of the broadcasting or a, a big portion of it. Yep. And I will be doing six hours a day. Six hours at, a day. Yeah. 10 a.m. on Thursday. Okay. So, and where can everybody listen to your voice all weekend? Um, it is streaming on YouTube all weekend. Mm -hmm. And then the finals, I believe, will be run elsewhere. But you can always you can always catch it on YouTube this okay. weekend for sure. So I can't wait to watch. Yeah, and, it's gonna uh, be fun. How excited are you? Have I'm you been so to this excited. venue before? I have. I did the uh PPA Atlanta um back in May. So it's a gorgeous venue. The lifetime mm -hmm. facilities are so well I've set heard up. That. It's awesome. I mean, they have that like stadium seating. So it's, uh, I don't, what's the proper way to say a sunken in court? Uh, yeah. A like, concave court. Concave. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to say it, There's but it's probably a term and we'll hear about it later <laughs> and sure. uh, be criticized for uh -huh. not knowing. Probably. I'm sorry, everybody, please don't be mad at me. But, um, yes, it's sunken in uh -huh. <laughs> concave inward, whatever you want to describe it. And yeah really cool atmosphere um surrounded by lots of trees and greenery it's cool it's a great setup uh very excited for that thursday of course is all challenger level teams which is going to be fun because as we know we'll get dive into the details later but we're heading into free agency now no more challenger rele relegation for 2024 as of now so interesting storylines there um then the premier level starts on friday and it's just going to be so fun i can't wait to be there the atmosphere is second to none with Major League Pickleball. It's so fun. The players love it. It's been way, it feels like a year since we've had our last MLP. I think it's been 95 days or something. Yeah, but it feels like a long time. It feels like time. a year. It's, I'm like, yeah. San Clemente felt literally like a year ago. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm so pumped to be back and to watch another MLP event. And uh, we are going to break down the group draws a little bit here at the end of the episode after we talk to our very special and exciting guest. Uh, but before that, Michelle, where can people buy tickets? Yeah, to this thing? get your tickets. It is time for MLP 2023 season two. So catch up on the action uh, with tickets coming to you now. You can get them. Anytime between September 21st and 24th are the dates to attend, um, but they are available at www.majorleaguepb.net slash ticks. It is an event you don't want to miss. And like we're about to find out lots of, it's a hot ticket. A lot of people in Atlanta, a lot of people, a lot of family. So how to head online and get your tickets. And um, yes, that is, that is that. And of course, want to thank our sponsors, as always, every week, starting with Margaritaville, Michelob Ultra, Circle, Toyota Prius, Dulce Vita Tequila, Hospital for Special Surgery, Sunday Swagger, Frometh Pickleball. You can visit the MLP online store at fromethpickleball.com to buy your MLP and MLP team gear. I promise you, season two is an event you don't want to miss. So, for sure, get your tickets. Thanks to our sponsors. We love you guys, and that is... That is that. Okay, Tyson, time now to welcome in our amazing guest this week. She is 24 years young, originally out of California. 25. Oh, 25. That's right. Oh, it's like your birthday. Yeah. So Happy sorry. birthday. <laughs> Oops. It's my birthday, actually. Yeah. Everybody I, tell her in Atlanta, happy birthday. Oh, wait, I wasn't at your birthday, but I thought I was at your birthday. I was at Cameron's birthday. Okay, anyways, happy birthday, Ferris. I'm sorry. 25 years old. That, now we rude. Now we already pre intro who you are. Uh, top female pro in pickleball. Obviously, 43 gold medals and counting. If I got that one wrong, you can let me know. Uh, triple crown at the U.S. Open and two-time MLP champ. First round draft pick this season. So happy to have Paris Todd back in the mix. She is best dressed in pro pickleball. Sorry, Tyson. Come on. Well, I'm she not is... pro pickleball. So it's like, <laughs> okay. come on. 
That's fair. But I think I in all pickleball. Toes, Tyson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can Let be me the have... guy version, I'll be the girl version. Let me have my thing. Out. We'll just yeah. get sponsors together. I mean, Hunter can, he can sit back. Okay. <laughs> He'll yeah. be fine. I can <laughs> connect you with people. Uh, okay, amazing. Well, you're playing for the Atlanta Bouncers home team. MLP Atlanta is here. But first, a crazy whirlwind getting into, into this event. We will skip the drama and jump right into the excitement of what makes Major League Pickleball amazing. What do you love the most about MLP and what are you most excited about in Atlanta? MLP is my favorite event. Everyone knows that. It's where I thrive. It's where I have the most fun. The team atmosphere is absolutely incredible. Normal tournaments are great and they're fun, but to have a team on your side, you know, up the net while you're playing, it's like you have that support, especially with our team Atlanta. We have such a great team. We have Simone, we have Pablo, we have Hunter, people that are all very close to me and that I have great relationships with. So I think for us, a big thing, and I've been talking about is chemistry, and that's a big reason why we chose our team. So I'm really looking forward to... I mean, we've been playing with each other for the last two, three weeks back in Fort Myers. So a lot of people are definitely overlooking us, but that even, I mean, it thrives us and we're hungrier now hearing all of the things kind of going on and what people are saying about the team. So we're excited. And thirstier. Exactly. Well, that's the thing. Like people shouldn't talk (laughs) crap because we come in a little bit hotter. We have no pressure. We come in, we're a little bit looser, you know, we're playing at home. That's a big thing for us. So it's really special. We're going to have all of uh, Anheuser-Busch, their employees are coming out, their family members. So there's going to be a lot of people out there cheering for us. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. I have a quick follow-up on that, Paris. What yeah. is your response to the haters named Shmimi that are... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anyone by that name, actually, Michelle. <laughs> you well, know, I, I can't say anything bad about, you know, people talking and different outlets or players it's like everyone has their own opinion and that's totally okay I mean we're gonna go and we're gonna play our best no matter what we're gonna leave it all on the court and we win together as a team we lose together as a team so we're just focused on our side of the net and our team and that's all that matters to us so we have we have a great support system you were famously absent and it was a conversation last season How excited are you to be back this season? And was there like some FOMO watching everything go down last season? Yeah, you know, I was watching every single event at home on my couch and it was really tough for me, but looking at it from a different perspective of I now get to sit home and watch all these players. I get to watch their tendencies. I get to see what they're doing. I get to see how players are acting because When you're playing an event as a player, you go there and you're warming up with your team, you're playing your matches, you don't really have time to see what's going on with other teams. So sitting back from that perspective, you see a lot more what you don't see as a player playing these events. So it gave me a really good idea of going into season two of this year, first of all, picking a team, figuring out who's going to mesh and gel the best, but also strategies playing against other players and other teams. So I feel like that gives us a big advantage going into this year. And I'm so excited to be back. You guys have no idea. I've been, the last few weeks, I've even been talking to Hunter. I'm like, I am so excited to be back. We got here and we were walking the venue and I was like, I got chills. I was like, yes, like this is where I need to be. So I'm excited. We're excited to have you. Like we've, uh, it's been the hype, honestly, since the draft. Before the draft, it was like, Paris Todd's back. Everybody, Paris Todd's back. Here she comes. She's back. And it's just like ripple effect through the pickleball world. Uh, You get drafted first on your team with the Atlanta bouncers in the first round. Did you know that was happening before it happened and already have plans to build your team out from there? I had previous uh, conversations with a few different teams that showed some interest. So I didn't know where I was going to sit exactly, but I had a feeling it would be first round. I'm really glad that I did go first round because I was able to build such a great team, but Going into the draft as a player, you can have conversations with different teams, but you really don't know. So for me, I was just doing homework on my end of, okay, this is my A choice, B choice, C choice, D choice, and then having different teams. So I had like all the way to a different Z team. So I had like four players and different outcomes of who I could choose and what I thought the best like right side player, left side player was, and just kind of making teams that way. But when you get put on a team, And you have to make decisions right when you get chosen within minutes. It's like to have kind of all that data figured out already was a big advantage. But I'm just so glad our GM, Leanne, was able to 
talk with me and we were able to work through some things because she had players that she wanted to draft. I had players that, you know, I wanted to be on my team. So we really had to work together and it was a team effort. There was, we were, uh, when she called me into the tent, I was actually in New York at the time and it was so exciting. I got to come over and meet everyone, you know, that was a part of the team and they basically sat down and were like, okay, these are our list of players that we want. What is your list? And we tried to make it work. So we had, we were going to our number two pick and we were about to choose because I really wanted Simone. I don't know if we could get our second pick or third pick or how it was going to work out. And we had probably 10 seconds before we made a decision. Leanne's on the Zoom call with some other of her teammates and they're all making decisions. So I couldn't hear what's going on in her ear but they were telling her like, pick this person, pick that person. And I look at her and I go, Leanne, pick Simone with literally five seconds left before she had to send it in. She looks at me, she types it into MLP and goes, Simone Jarjim and sent it. And she had all people in her ear telling her to do other things. And I was like, okay. I was like, here we go. Like everyone wants love. That's a lot of pressure. (laughs) Yeah, it was really cool. But after everyone was drafting on our team, me and Leanne look at each other, we're like, we did good. Like we feel really good about this because I wanted Pablo no matter what. He was always on my radar. Very high pick. So I'm glad we got him. And then Hunter's just the icing on the cake. He's a dark horse. People don't really know. They haven't <laughs> seen him. He's been on the APP tour. He's been killing it. Almost triple crowning. I mean, every week in APP. Like for people to overlook that, I mean, it was just everything happened this year and Simone, me and Hunter playing on APP. They don't get to see much of us in MLP or PPA. So people don't really know our game. So that gives us a big advantage. Pablo almost beat Ben last week in mixed and men's. And he's been getting really close. Him and Federico have been doing incredible all year. He's been great in singles. I mean, I don't know how people can overlook us, but hey, we're here. So you talked about A, B, C, D, Zeke squad all the way down. Mm-hmm. What letter is this squad? If you, like, did <laughs> you, you know- get your A squad? This was my B squad, actually. And to get that in MLP is very rare. So for it to, I mean, happen the way that it did and to work out, I was like, wow, like it was, it was a big relief. So who would be your A squad? Can you share? This is my A squad. I can't share. My B squad is my A squad. (laughs) Yeah. So, but the thing about um, Anheuser-Busch is they have some, with some of the players they can draft, there's some, you have to be 21. There's a few different guidelines. Oh, interesting. So some players that we actually couldn't draft that I had on my radar, but it worked out for a few oh. and wouldn't have done it any other way. So, and I didn't know that going into it. So we sat down and I was like, good thing I have a list to Z, you know, so we can figure this out and work through it. So is it cause you have to chug a beer after every point? <laughs> oh, we have to do shoeies like Tyson on the court. We're like, <laughs> back with Michael Vultures. That's part of the deal. <laughs> they were doing photo shoots with beer. They got the whole nine yards over there. Yeah, I love I mean, it. It's pretty cool to have. I mean, we have it on our jerseys. Like we got our jerseys, and we're like, wow, we have Michael Ultra like on our jerseys. How cool is that? I mean, the fact that they're in pickleball now, like the sport is growing like crazy. It's so fun to be a part of. Okay, so dive deeper into the Hunter pick because yes. it can be a challenge playing with your significant other. So yeah. there's a, a, there's a, an abundance of ways we can go with this, but I guess we'll start with what is it like and what was that? And is this public process? knowledge or it is now? It's been, yeah. it's on my Instagram. Okay. It's, so it's all over it's, <laughs> it's like Instagram. I assumed, else. but it wasn't like an announcement. You know how on Facebook you used to be able to be like, this is my boyfriend. In this a relationship like, on Yeah, Facebook. in a relationship, that's right. So I never saw that. It's complicated with Hunter Johnson. <laughs> That's not. right. Yeah, they had the it's complicated. Hi, huh? I forgot about yeah, that. It's so, complicated. Fourth yeah, round so draft people, pick. People will put divorce very sad. Uh, yes, but yes. It's like, okay, like, do you really need to let anyone know on Facebook? But. I feel like you took some heat for that pick, maybe. But it makes sense. You guys play a lot together a lot. Like, it's... Yeah, I mean, and for sure, like, that was our GM's one of her concerns. Like, okay, like, we have the pick of a few different players. Like, what do you think? And I asked her opinion and she asked me, she's like, well, you know, you guys are in a relationship. Like, obviously that's a concern of mine, which is totally valid because if I was in her position, I would think the same thing, but there's also a different side to looking at it of, well, you know, that person very well, you have chemistry. We have played all year together. So we already know how each other plays. So there's no like learning curve of getting used to how does this person play? Same thing with Simone. We've been playing together all year. There's no learning curve here with our team with, Simone and Pablo, yes, with, you know, some of those things. But other than that, it's like we're pretty locked in as a team and with our partnerships and our relationships. And 
you even look at some MLPs of the first event, players take a little bit of time, even if they're practicing all week. Unless you're playing in those high-pressure situations, you really don't know how your partner's going to perform if you've never played with them before. So for us to have that relationship already and to know how we handle things. I mean, me and Hunter won the U.S. Open together. Me and Simone won the U.S. Open together. Like, we've been in those situations time after time. So we know what each other's going to do. So I think that's a big advantage for us. And, um, yeah, I mean, sometimes he yells at me, I yell at him. Like, it's just the way it goes. But that's just relationships and that's just life. I mean, <laughs> I've been playing on court with other people and they've said something to me. I've said something to them. Like, it, it's a lot of pressure playing with people sometimes. And the sport and it gets, you know, taken out of proportion sometimes. But hey, like, that's our life. That's our sport. You talk about it, you work through it. And next time you're better. With, I have a quick follow up there. What's the biggest challenge playing with your significant other for our pickleball fans that um, either do or don't like playing with their significant others? I would say communication. So if you're not clear with your partner of or your significant other of what <laughs> is making you happy and what is making you unhappy with their actions and how maybe one of you reacts and vice versa. If you kind of have a good understanding and communicate with her, like, hey, that pissed me off that you did that. Okay, next time I'll do this better and trying to work through that. But you have to make those changes. You can't just be stubborn and be like, I'm not going to make that change for you because you pissed me off. Like you have to work together. So, but I mean, hey, that's why a lot of people don't play together. You know, you see in rec play, you see husband and wife like yelling at each other and yeah, like it normally doesn't work. <laughs> like then go play with someone else, you know? Like so. I tried to teach my wife pickleball. How'd that work? Bad, really bad. <laughs> Did she throw a paddle at your face? She wanted to. Well, you're still married. <laughs> we are, yeah. But I stopped trying to teach her to play pickleball. I let her go and, and do it with yeah. So with friends. Yeah. trying to well, teach her about the kitchen line was a, a lot. <laughs> Controversial. Oh my yeah. She's like, yeah. I'll tell you about getting in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then you can say, honey, well, you belong in the kitchen. <laughs> no, that, so that's the end she's of like, that. you could, yeah. you could use some more time in there too. None of that. I could. <laughs> I'm okay in the kitchen, guys. So let's, how you guys been in Atlanta for a few days now. Yeah. How are you guys working together? We're working together. We're doing great. We actually had some Atlanta bouncers. We had a uh, reveal party on Sunday night and we had, we actually went to the, I don't know what baseball team we were at a baseball game last night. The Braves? Night. Yes. The Braves. Sorry. I know they <laughs> lost. So at least I know the score, which is great, but we've uh -huh. been doing some team bonding and hanging out with our GM and some of the owners. So it's been really fun. I think the biggest thing for why, uh, our team last year was so successful as we hung out, we spent time together, we get really comfortable with each other and it helps trusting each other on the court. It all, you know, relates and the fact that we can, we all like each other and can hang out is a really big thing. So our team has been great in our ownership and they've done everything to make us comfortable and give us what we need. So we're really stoked to be on the bouncers. They've been awesome to us. Yeah. We, uh, I talked to Matt Davis quite a bit. He's, uh, over at, uh, He's in charge of the team, right? Mostly sports marketing and mm -hmm. Leanne as well. Super awesome. Uh, aside from you, who would you say is the second biggest baseball fan? Like who was most excited to be at the baseball game? So it was actually funny because Hunter grew up playing baseball. So he loves baseball games. He knows everything that's going on. Pablo had never been to a baseball game ever oh. in his entire life. So we're like, Pablo, welcome to America. Like, we'll come <laughs> show you how I do things over here. America's so, pastime. I know. So he was asking us, he was like, so like, what is everyone's position? Because he has no idea about it. And we're, and Hunter was like, well, like, usually you'll see people hit a home run. And I was like, do people usually hit home runs? Pablo's like, I don't know. And there was two home runs hit last night. So we're like, Pablo, the fact you have to see two is pretty cool. <laughs> he was like, yeah, yeah, pretty cool. Like, so, <laughs> but it's been fun and. We, this morning, Pablo and I were leaving for practice and he's so funny. He like, will park the car, forget the keys inside the car, not lock the car, like leaves our Airbnb, leaves the doors unlocked. Oh. Like he left his, no, his like water jug in outside of the car. And this morning, and I drive back after practice and his water jug's there. I'm like, Pablo, like you need help. <laughs> so we got out of the car. I was like, Pablo, did you lock the car? I was like, did you shut the trunk? Like. Cause he left the trunk open. He's driving with the trunk open and me and Hunter are like, his trunk's like wide open. Like, what is he doing? So it, there's a lot going on over here. <laughs> That's so funny. 
What's um what's the vibe like in Atlanta? Like for fans that want to come out and support, give us the boots on the ground scene. Well, the center court is going to be amazing. So I was there this year for the PPA that was in Atlanta at the Lifetime. And that setup was great. They actually had three courts on, so three center courts. And this year they just have one. So it's going to be really focused on the main court. And the setup looks incredible. They're still doing some finishing touches. But I'm really excited to see the turnout. And especially for us being at home, it's so exciting for us. So whoever's watching this, please come out and support us at Lifetime this weekend. And all the fans who can get the better. But I think the, uh, the stadium will be, I mean, I think it'll be full. All the yeah. VIP, all the sides. So I think there's going to be not enough seats for people. And I'm hearing like, oh, all of our family members are coming. All these people are coming. Those people. Aww. So it's like, I think it's going to be a really great turnout. So, so it'll fun. be great for the players. The atmosphere is going to be great. It really is. It's so fun. It's so fun to be there for these kind of events. Um, let's talk about the group play now, though. Group A. At least you're not in the group of death that people are uh, That's what I've been disclosing as group, group B. Yeah. It's the top three. I mean, they've got Ben Johns, Riley Newman, and Annalie yeah. Waters all in the same pool, which is yeah. fascinating. Um but you guys are with the Bay Area Breakers, Leah Jansen, Etta Wright, Connor Garnett, Rafa Hewitt, Orlando Squeeze, Anna Bright, Andre Descu, Zayn Navratil, Rachel Rohrbacher, and the Texas Ranchers, Dylan Frazier, Travis Rattenmeyer, Georgia Johnson, Lauren Stratman. Of those teams, who scares you the most? Uh, no one scares me, that's for sure. <laughs> um, Who's the biggest like challenge? Um... It'll be interesting to stay because we haven't seen any of the teams play together yet, and those aren't normal partnerships. Um, so it, it's hard to say from the beginning. I feel like if we're an event or two in, we kind of get a better idea. Um, but I think we're just uh, really excited as a team, no matter who we play against. I really like our pool. Obviously, the other pool is a little crazy of what's going on over there. But even if we're in that pool, I think it would be a challenge for us, and we're up for any challenge. But Listen, everyone's good. Everyone's playing well. Everyone's raised their level in the last few months. Everyone's getting better. So there's really no easy matches, especially with the scoring. It's like anyone can beat anyone at any time. They changed the freeze now, so there's no freeze at 18. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's the wild, wild west, you know? You have a few – you're down by 10 points. You can come back when someone's frozen on 20. You can come back and win. So for people to think if they're up or have a big lead that it's over, like it's not over at MLP. So – we're just going to be locked into every single point and we, we want to challenge and that's why we're here. That's why we're athletes. It's like we live for that. We breathe for that. That's what MLP is all about. Have you, you, you have the team together now in Atlanta and you said you watched last season from the couch and did your studying mm -hmm. and listen it, to the broadcast and listen to the yeah. broadcast. <laughs> How could I not? We spent a lot of time together in season one. <laughs> is there any special preparation you're doing for any particular team or player? Oh yeah. But I can't tell my secrets. <laughs> okay. How many of the, how many of these teams are you doing special prep for? Everyone in our pool, for sure. We have um, our coach, Chad Edwards. He's helping us. He's doing a lot of research for us as well. And okay. we're having meetings with him and we're going over different players and different tendencies. And we're having a plan going in for every match and whoever we feel like, you know, goes up against better against a different team because we have Pablo and Simone and the, especially with a lefty on your team, the matchups look a lot different because there's so many righty players. So we want to make sure that we're kind of in the forefront of that and who pairs up better against who. Um, so the fact that we know players are ready so well and know their games, it's, it helps, but to do studying on top of that and really just potential matchups and what we think we'll get the better of, I think is a big thing. And, now I know that you can only, uh, it's, you choose one or the other as far as the coin toss. So you don't kind of get everything like you used to. So it's a little bit more evened out as far as like sides go and, you know, choosing women, men's, and then being home team or away team. So, uh, there's a few different rule changes in that, that we're looking at and just trying to make sure that we do all of our homework leading up to Friday. When it comes to playing with <clears throat> a player like Simone, especially on the women's side of things, she receives some speculation because she's older in that way, but she's still so good. And I want to hear your perspective on what we don't see as viewers, as people watching the game. What goes underappreciated the most with the greatness of Simone Jardim? Well, first of all, she's a legend. I mean, she's been around longer than anyone. She's 
played against the best. She actually has the third most gold medals in PPA Tour. And I saw that last week when I was watching Cincinnati. She hasn't played PPA Tour in over two years, and she's still number third behind Ben Nana Lee. That's pretty incredible, and she doesn't play anymore. So I sent her a picture of that. I was like, Simone, you know that you're still number third for gold medals? And she's like, oh, yeah, like, you know, like I won pretty much every week. I was like, of course, of course you did. But the thing about Simone is she's not only is she a great coach, she sees the game in such a way and is able to explain just different tendencies of players and just the game overall. And she's still, I mean, people overlook her and think, oh, yeah, you know, she's older, but it's like, She's playing better than ever, and she's so smart, especially with pickleball. Like, your brain and being smart is, like, number one thing, and everything kind of comes after that. So the fact that we have her, not only – like, we were even talking as a team. We're like, do we want to coach? Like, our general managers were asking us. We're like, well, we have Simone as a great player and a coach. So she's, like, a two-in-one, but also we want another set of eyes because we think it's important. But, I mean, just the knowledge she brings to the game, and she's still – we were playing singles last week at her house and she's beating me in singles. And I'm like, what is going on? She's like running me side to side. She's like, I mean, she's just, she's deceptive. It's really hard to read what she's doing too. So to have someone like that on the team is, is really important. Lastly, Paris, I am um, conspiring with Dylan Frazier this weekend for ML Palooza. He is my pickleball coach and I would love to end this interview with uh, any advice you have for ML Palooza for yours truly. And, uh, when Tyson can play in our next one. I would say don't listen to Dylan Frazier. <laughs> 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 Just be like, Michelle, like, don't miss. <laughs> Is he going to say anything? Because I need, oh I'm God. like a, I'm a words of affirmation person. I need feedback. <laughs> you need to be like, Dylan, I need words of affirmation. He'll stand there and be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's either going to love or hate me. I don't know which. <laughs> Just talk his ear off and see what he does. That's the best thing. Can you come to our bench? Thanks. Yes. Yes, for (laughs) sure. I'll be there on the sideline. So thank you. Paris, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're so excited you're back at MLP. Uh, you definitely make things more exciting for the fans and, uh, best of luck. We'll be cheering you on me from my couch, Michelle, <laughs> uh, unbiased from, from the, the booth. Yeah. yeah. Unbiased. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jur- journalism thing, 101. <laughs> You're one of my favorite names to say on air. I will say Paris Todd. It has a nice ring to it. It does have a good ring. Paris Todd. You're on my reel. <laughs> and- <laughs> You're on my broadcast reel. And even so got me seeing- my tennis channel. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. Even seeing it in writing, it's got the two R's and the two D's. It just yeah, all flows. I know. I, you, my parents, I don't know why they put two R's, but I'm glad they did. I was like, people are like, why is he even spell like that? I was like, I honestly have no idea. I asked my parents, they have no idea. So we're just rolling with it. It, it just really is the, like a, it's like a celebrity name, though. It's actually my fake name. People didn't know that. Wait, hold I was up. Ask you that. <laughs> what? I don't I'm even know joking. you anymore. I'm just joking. <laughs> It's real. I oh, it is real. With it and made up you a whole sh- story. You but... should have just like some <laughs> super wonky, super long, hard to pronounce name, and be like, they just started well, calling me. You Paris. know, my dad's actual his last name was not Todd; it was his middle name. So his last name was actually Rosenbaum, and he dropped his last name to go Charles Todd for his middle name. So Whoa. if I was Paris Rosenbaum, it would not have that good of a ring. But Paris, I was like, thank you. That Dad. is a thank way you, different though. twist I appreciate on Paris. That. Yes. Interesting. Like, you just put a few extra dollars in my bank account. Thank you. <laughs> What's your middle name? I can't believe I've never asked you this before. I don't have a middle name. No, what? just Paris Todd. It, yeah. It wow. It makes up. sense. I know, but it's, it's true. I'll show you the birth yeah. certificate later on. Wow. Yeah, bring that because we don't believe you. Bring it <laughs> to Atlanta. Sorry, I think bring I lost birth. it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also don't have a middle name. Do you so not? What? I don't, yeah. Yeah, you nodded That's like so- that was normal. What? Yeah, it's normal to me. Huh. I've never heard of this. My dad so. did not like his middle name, so he opted mm-hmm. to not give his children middle names. Whoa. What was your dad's middle name? His dad's name. And people 
always called him by his dad's name, which he didn't like because he was like, I have my own name. Don't call me my same name as my dad. Yeah. It's a whole thing. This is fascinating. Yeah, we're I just getting, learned something today. Oh, Thank we're you. We're getting deep. We're learning yeah. about each other here. <laughs> Further away from pickleball, but <laughs> <laughs> interesting nonetheless. Paris, again, thank you. I know you have to get out on the court and practice with the team. Uh, best of luck this weekend, and we cannot wait to watch. Thank you. I'm going to practice in this and these socks. <laughs> that way when you put real when you put real stuff on you'll feel amazing though after that oh, exactly i know i can't wait to get out of this i was thinking i was like we're doing a zoom like do i need to wear pants do i need to wear sweatpants like, I'm like i'll wear pants just in case it's in the shop but i'm wearing puppy socks so that was my compromise yeah <laughs> usually Perfect. i'm wearing one of your aloe tops for for the podcast but today i went to a great closet now. <laughs> I, I like Thanks. that Thanks, Steve. Hey. Thank you guys for having me on. I appreciate bye. it. Yep. Bye. That was fun, Tyson. Always a good time. Paris is great. Can't wait to watch her in action this weekend. And of course, as a reminder, don't forget, get your MLP season two tickets online at www.majorleaguepb.net slash ticks. This is an event you don't want to miss. Paris said it. It's already a hot ticket. Everybody's coming. You should too. I promise you promise you, you cannot understand the level of detail that these pro players play with unless you come to a live event and watch it live yourself. It's unbelievable. It's so much fun. We can't wait to have you there. Yeah, I am jealous I won't be there and uh, cannot state enough how exciting it is in person. So if you are in the area or close by, it is worth it to get a ticket and go see these guys play. Mm -hmm. Uh Michelle, let's get to the group draw. You're going to be in Atlanta. You're yes. broadcasting from the booth. You've been yes. broadcasting every uh, event uh, so far this year, and you have your fingers on the pulse <laughs> of all of these players. Uh, before we get into the group A, the group B, and the group C analysis, there mm -hmm. are a couple changes to the point system mm -hmm. this year or a change. Can you tell mm -hmm. us about that? Yeah, well, Paris mentioned it, rally scoring, no freeze, and you win by two. So you can go beyond the standard 21, mm -hmm. um, which initially kind of looks like, what? A, a jarring change, but it actually is supposed to reward the team that gets to 21st. So you must win on your serve. That's the other nuance. And you must win by two. So gets rid of that freeze that was on at 20 or once you reached 20 and then the other team would freeze at 18 and yeah. so on. It was confusing to explain from a broadcaster standpoint to new, um, to new audience members, to new pickleball fans. I think this model at least makes it a little bit clearer that way. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of the people that have been playing with it, I haven't pulled all the players, but they seem to like it. We'll see how that pans out, of course, in match form. Um, but rally scoring, people still think that anything's more possible for the underdog. So that really does make, things interesting when we look at the the group play and who comes out of each group and all these uh gauntlets it seems like there are no easy groups i mean i know they say group b is the group of death but like they all look pretty challenging in my opinion yeah I, and they are like it's like literally like every group has a bunch of top 10 players mm -hmm. in it so it's it's just that group b got the top three ranked players in a row right. in there mm -hmm. um and then secondly, I, uh, I know Colin Johns hurt his Achilles earlier this season. Yes. I did ask about, uh, some injured players in this premier level. And as of now, there are no plans to replace any of the players on the roster. Yeah. So that may change, but currently everyone who is on the roster is set to play. That's great. That's great news. And especially with that kind of injury, it's yeah. like you don't want to overdo it. But he played since he said he felt like 85 percent. That was a yeah. couple of weeks ago. So um, good on Colin for for battling yeah. his way back and hopefully. Happy to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's get into it then. So we have Group yeah. A and we have the Atlanta Bouncers, Paris's team there. Uh, we have the Bay Area Breakers, the Orlando Squeeze, and the Texas Ranchers. Again, mm -hmm. all of these were selected at random mm -hmm. to be in pool play for the first round. Uh, it, what team stands out to you there for multiple teams? Who's who's coming away from that one? It's so hard to say because they're, like Paris mentioned, like you haven't seen a lot of these partnerships come to play yet. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, on paper, this team might look really strong, but maybe they come out and play together and they're not. You know, so 
I like um, I like Bay Area because I I like the lefty dynamic with men's doubles. I like the Rafa Connor situation. Then the Leia at a right. I think at a right such an underrated solid player. Orlando. It just depends on how Rachel Rohrbacher. She's the X factor there. But honestly, I've been impressed with what I've seen from her. So I yeah. think she could be a potential dark horse. And then with the ranchers, you have pretty, <clears throat> um, you have pretty known entities with Dylan Frazier, Georgia Johnson, Lauren Stratman, Travis Rettenmeyer. I like the ranchers. Um, I do. I like Dylan and Travis together. I think Dylan could be an incredible left side guy. He play, he can shift both. He does it well when he shifts into mixed doubles well on that left side. So I'm thinking he would play the left with Travis not sure why not, um, but he could also be a good right. I don't know I, what, what what side they will choose to play between those two. But if I have to pick, I hate to go against my girl Paris. I still think I don't think Atlanta is going to be as down as everyone's saying they're going to be. But if I had to pick one team, I think I'm going to go with the Ranchers. I agree. I'm looking at the teams. I think mm-hmm. it or the makes- squeeze. I kind of had a hard time with that one too. Yeah, uh, for me, I'm looking at those and I'm thinking the ranchers are the least surprising to come yes. out of that. Like I definitely, yes. you look at the other teams, you're like, they could definitely, they could for sure shake things up. These people are little or unknown, so it's going to depend on one or two players. The ranchers are a known solid team individually, mm-hmm. each one of those players. And so that's also why I'm like, the ranchers is where... If I had to put money somewhere, it would be on the ranchers, but it's not to say that I would be surprised by any of these other teams coming through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I agree with that. Uh, let's get to group B, the group of uh, death. death. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> we have the Chicago Slice. They had the first uh, round, they had the first number one draft pick there with Ben Johns. We have the Dallas Pickleball Club. DC pickleball team and Utah Black Diamonds. Mm-hmm. Your I mean, team initially earlier yeah, this was Utah, but that was, was like not when they had the best every best every best draft pick in their group. Tyson, now yeah. this task gets a little bit tougher. I mean, I get it. I I get why it's called the group of death. And while every team seems challenging, it's like okay. But when you have a Ben Johns across the net, when you have an Annalie Waters across the net, they're ultimate, they're, they are X factors. Now, in the exhibition game in Chicago, the Bay Area Breakers technically beat Chicago Slice, but it was an exhibition. Cool setup, by the way, in Wrigley Field, and the yeah. courts were maybe not as great. Um, but I I mean, I'm never going to count out Ben, and I, I would I hate to go on record going against Ben Johns, but... Have you you went through all the all the team right? So you Chicago yeah. Slice, Ben Johns, Lacey, Jesse, Eric. Yep. I any team that Ben's on is good. I actually really like DC and Dallas. I think is sneaky good too. I don't know. I can't. I like. I wrote down Utah still as my top because Annalie Waters. I'm never going to go against her. And then Thomas Wilson, I think, is incredibly underrated. And then of course they have the go Irina. Irina doesn't miss a semifinal or quarterfinal. So I feel like Utah is through. And yeah. then it comes down to going against Ben Johns. Then you have Riley Newman and mm-hmm. the Kawamotos who have been through deep in a lot of the tournaments that they've played in. And you have Christian Elshon in D.C. How Riley and Christian Elshon will come together, I don't know. That is definitely a question mark there. Uh-huh. But Dallas, Dave Fleming also has a good track record in MLP. And yeah. Dave Fleming drafted Dallas. When you get Jay Davillier in the fourth round, that's a steal in in the men department. Yeah. So I guess if I have to choose, I'm going Utah, and I'm going to slide Dallas in there because Elise and Callie training in Utah, training in the altitude, mm-hmm. they're very familiar with one another. But it's hard to go against the Kawamotos too. So it's a tough group. Give but me Dallas. Dallas? Question, question mark. Utah and Dallas would be Utah my top and Dallas. Two. What would be yours? S- I think you have to go Chicago Slice with Ben John. Really? Eric Lang is big. He's quit his day job. He is playing full-time pickleball now. Jesse Irvine and Irvin and Lacey Schneeman, both very, very strong players. And Ben has proven that he can lead a team. 
Good you point. look at Anna Lee Waters, top rated player in the world. Yeah. 16 years old. Can she lead a team? That's can a really she, good point. Can she do enough emotionally and mentally as well as physically to lead the team like she needs to? She, she could, but Ben has proven that he can. That's a really good point. And for me, I think that's the reason I have to go with the slice. I know it's okay. probably a little bit boring of a choice, but like no. I look at it, I look at his track record and his maturity in it as a pickleball player and a person in general on the court is going to be paramount here. Yeah. And to your point too, with Lacey going full-time pickleball, she was an aerospace engineer. Yep. She's full-time and maybe a player that's under the radar. So I like that. I like that pick for you. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for covering all our bases. <laughs> yeah, no, we got and them all there. <laughs> yeah, Group A, we were pretty unified. Group B, yeah. uh, you know, we're a little bit all over the board. Let's get to Group C now. <laughs> oh, this one's spicy. Group C, we have the Arizona Drive, uh, Julian Arnold, Vivian David, Vivian Glosman, Deckel Barr, Brooklyn Aces, Catherine Parento, Andrea Coop, Hayden Patrickwin, Tyler Loong, Columbus uh Pickleball Club, I think they're going by now. Mm -hmm. Columbus Sliders was it initially. J.W. Johnson, Megan Dizon, Maggie Brasha, and Colin Johns. Uh, mm -hmm. Be interesting to see if he's at 100% this weekend, mm -hmm. saying he was at 85 a couple weeks ago. Miami Pickleball Club. A lot of people, a lot of talk and conversation around this club. Uh, Federico <laughs> Staxrud, Tyson McGuffin, Hurricane Tyra Black, and Mary Brasha. What yep. are your takes from this one? So a lot of takes here because Good. the first of all, let's dive into at 10 a.m. Tyson on Friday morning. Mm -hmm. You would need a reason to tune in. Well, Miami plays Brooklyn. And if you watched a tournament ago, there was or, or pick up memes on pickleball or any pickleball comment and social media, you yeah. saw the Tyler Lue Tyson McGuffin exchange, right? Yes. Yes. So that is match number one on championship court at 10 a.m. They say this is random. <laughs> so good. But it's so good. It's this is so some good. like reality yeah. show stuff. It is reality so TV it setup. Is. Yeah, it's so like good. Unscripted, but scripted at the same time. No, I'm just kidding. It's not scripted at all, which makes it even better. Yeah. Um. So that's one I'm looking at. Then you have Hurricane Tyra Black, obviously getting the promotion to premier level. She's obsessed with pickleball. She talks about it on the Major League Pickleball social medias. She literally said she was on court till 2 a.m. after one of her pick up, after one of her MLP matches last season. Yeah. Um, so I think she has not only proven obviously her ability to be a premier level, but to get her in the third round. And honestly, to even get Tyson McGuffin in, in the second round that um Miami was able to do with the way that Tyson is playing, like he's back, in my opinion. Yeah. He's playing better than ever. Tyson McGuffin is is back to peak standard. And so I like Miami. I'm I'm picking Miami in, in this group, I think. Um, I also like, I mean, I like, there's nobody I don't like. I think the Brooklyn Aces are intriguing. I think Hayden Patrickwin, um, Tyler Lewing is steady, Catherine Parento, you have the best female there. How mm -hmm. will they all come together, though? That's the question, I think, um, with that. But between Federico Staxrud, Tyson McGuffin, Tyra Black, Mary Brasha, you've got yeah. a dominant left side female player in, in Tyra Black. If Mary can handle that setup role on the right, I think you're in good shape. And then if it comes to a dream breaker, you're solid. You're more than solid. Fed yeah. just got his first win over Ben Johns in his career. Like that team is looking good to me. Um, and then you have an interesting storyline between the sisters squaring yep. off in the same pool, Mary and Maggie. And then, um, yeah, the, the injury you mentioned with Colin Johns, I think yeah. does he, I mean, he, JW and Colin Johns, that's a solid men's team. That's hey, you, Columbus is my pick. Yeah. Like Miami, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. They look very, very strong. Coming down to a dream breaker is very, very strong. Columbus, you have JW, uh -huh. arguably, maybe not even arguably, the second best player next to Ben mm -hmm. Johns. And I think he will play very well with Colin. Uh -huh. uh, and then you have Megan Dizon, who last season was MVP of one of the events and Maggie yep. Brasha also very strong. I think the only, the only really weak point of that team is how healthy will Colin Johns be mm -hmm. and dream breaker is Colin Johns strong Ooh. enough singles player, especially yeah, if he's not feeling a hundred percent. Yeah. That's a really good point. That's a really good point. So they're just going to have to clean up in three. Yeah. 
But I think if they can do that, I think they are a force. Right. So yeah, that's interesting. And how Megan and Maggie come together. That's the yeah. interesting thing. You're bringing players together that don't play together, you know, it, regularly. Yeah. Uh, so. you, you'll only have to remember one name on AZ Drive when it's uh, – women's doubles the vivians you can just say the vivians i saw that vivian made a great play yeah <laughs> viv again <laughs> with the play so that'll with the be good play. strikes one down the middle and you know looking uh, at that team too it's it's mm-hmm. hard you got julian arnold vivian david vivian glossman and deckel bar all really powerful players i know and that's the beauty of major league pickleball but i know if i gotta stick my neck out here somewhere i'm saying columbus okay. for me i like that yeah. Nah, so, I like that. Uh, but yeah, anything else? Um, no, I think it's going to be a great event. I don't want to pick a winner out of this one because I just can't. I just yeah, it's hard. It's hard <laughs> it's enough so for hard. me to get to the like, especially with the gauntlet. <laughs> be like, it wouldn't really surprise me if anyone came through. I'd be like, Correct. okay, like that makes sense. It's just yeah. the levels getting better. Everybody's raising their game. So yeah, it's and fun to watch. the talent pool is getting deeper and deeper, yes. which then brings exactly. everybody closer together. Mm-hmm. So. Yep. It is true. Yep. Uh, well, Michelle, I am so jealous you get to be at the event in Atlanta. And uh, we'll I can't you. wait to hear your voice on broadcast Thank all day you. as I turn it on. I've purposely not scheduled in anything for Friday <laughs> so I can tune in all day long. And uh, great, great podcast. Paris yeah. was awesome. Yeah, And it was fun. Uh, yeah, good luck in Atlanta. And Thank we you. will get the breakdown from you next week after the event. Yeah. Wish me luck. And Emma Palooza Tyson, I've got to go lay my heart on the line. I get performance anxiety as a former division one athlete. It's embarrassing. And my goal, no, that's a natural this athlete weekend, right there. I'm coming for you, Tim parks. We're going to match up and we're going to play and I'm going to lay everything that I've trained. So diligently, <laughs> diligently for the yes. last couple of weeks. And so I will not say all of now. your strengths because Thank I know you. some of them and they are incredible. So, Mostly don't share my weaknesses because that's the bigger vulnerability. But I've been huh? improving. So here we there go. There are no weaknesses. ML Palooza. You, will, you heard it here first. I'm taking you down, Tim. And I know that, he's listening. He is. He always does. Uh, we're out. Till next <laughs> okay. week. Bye, everybody. See ya. See ya.